Okay, someone asked a question in class this week and it was really interesting because it raised a method that I haven't illustrated before, but it's something that's quite simple to do and it's quite revealing. So I'm working here with my full site design with Northern, Southern, Impact and Reference. And this is the NMDS on the biota. I haven't done any transformation here. If I did a transformation, the results would change to some extent. And always with biota, you need to think whether a transformation is required or not. Now, the results are fairly clear in that the black impact sites and samples are separating out from the blue reference. And the square north, southern samples are up the top and the northern samples down the bottom. Now, before I go on, I should point out that the orientation of this ordination is entirely arbitrary. What's important is the relationships of the points. So I could flip this top to bottom or left to right and the interpretation would stay the same because the relationship among the points would not differ. You may see this in your own results if you do an ordination a couple of times. You might get similar patterns, but flipped top to bottom or left to right. Okay, so the question, which species, which taxa are the ones that are most important for causing the separation? Because it might be that some species re respond to the pollutant much more strongly than other species. And maybe there are species distinguishing southern from northern sites. So species which respond to depth and the environmental characteristics associated with it. So that's an interesting question, and it brings up a method that I have not illustrated before. But it's quite a simple thing to do. So to start with, here's the data which I've copied. See little marching ants there. Over here, I'm clicking in that cell there. I've got row and column attributes on, and I'm repeating this because people often have trouble with this. Paste. And now I've got the variable names here for the names of the columns. And I've got the labels down here as the names of the rows. And I need to go in here and tell pass that these are grouping variables and then I need to also go in here and change the colors and symbols but I'm not going to bother so that is by clicking in here to do that I need to have ah oh, sorry I can either do that manually or I can do it automatically so I've selected a the site column and next to it I've got a data column it happens to be the x-coordinate doesn't matter edit row color symbols and now if I've got this set up properly I will get group one two three four and I can go in and edit the colors and symbols I'm not going to do that here um, the other thing I've done So let's just uh, turn the row attributes off. The other th command I've used is down here, remove uninformative rows or columns. Now for PCA and NMDS, that doesn't matter, but for some of the other ordination methods, all zero columns cause a problem. So I've got a bunch of options in here for getting rid of columns that are not telling me much, and the same for rows. So all I used here was that one. Okay, so here's the file where I've got the symbols and colors set up and I have selected, I've removed the all zero columns. I pulled the type grouping variable over here so that it's in front of all the text because I need a grouping variable in order to do this. And then it's multivariate test simpa. Now SIMP is not really a test in the sense that in past it doesn't give me a p-value but it does do a breakdown of information in a way that's meaningful. So you can see I've got group 1's reference, group 2 is impact. And I'll show the importance of this in a moment. Uh, break hers is automatically selected here which is appropriate. So let's go across. 
Going down, we've got the taxa in order of importance for separating reference and impact. And the last two columns here are the means for reference and impact. So E03 means move the decimal three places to the right. So there's 2,940 on average of a worm 13 at reference, 2,550 at impact. Worm 8666 at reference, 235 at impact. And as you go down, in this particular set of results, the reference is always higher than the impact. That won't necessarily always be the case. Over here is the average dissimilarity um, between reference and impact, and that's not really too meaningful. What's useful are the next two columns, contribution percent and commun com cumulated percent. So contribution percent is how much that species contributes to separating reference and impact. And worm 13 is uh, nearly 11%. So out of 50 species, that's quite substantial. As you see, those percentages uh, drop off because that's the variable that's used for ranking the putting new species in order. Uh, next one is worm 8 with nearly 10%. And in worm 14, again, with nearly 10%. The cumulative just adds them up. So 10.45 and then 10.44 plus 9.8 is 20.3 and so on. So the next step is to pick a cutoff. And then people pick a cutoff and then just consider the most important taxa. So I could pick a cutoff of, say, 50%, in which case I would be looking at these six species here, mollusk through mollusk three through to worm thirteen, as the ones that were contributing fifty percent, half of the difference between reference and impact. So out of the fifty species, six are responsible for fifty percent of the difference. A more conventional cutoff is something like seventy-five percent, in which case we go all the way down here to worm twelve. 12. Now, the cutoff itself is arbitrary. So 50% is a sensible one, 75% is a sensible one. You could also go 40, 60, 80, anything like that. So the advantage of this is I now know which, are, which species are responding most strongly to the impact. Now, I said I'd look at this here, so let's go back in here. And what I need to do now is bring over the site column. I'm going to drag. And just do this in two stages. So I'll bring the site column over there, back into select. And now again, I'll select all the taxa. I use the cursor keys here. I find it much easier than the mouse and more reliable test, simple. And now you can see we've got group one, group two. So it only selects the first two groups. Uh, but then I can switch and see, okay, what separates group one and three or group one and four? Now, if you've got four groups, there's six comparisons, one versus two, three, and four, two versus three and four, and three versus four probably be a bit tedious to look at all of those. So you would probably focus on just a couple of comparisons of particular interest. Now you don't have to go in and look at individual groups. You can come by, uh, you can simply look at the two main grouping variables here. So type and see which ones are responding to pollution and also location and see which ones are responding to depth.